Hey guys, what's up? Twelve well, Umtron, back out of another video. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at set number seven five three eight six, Paz Vizsla and Moff Gideon's battle. And if you like this video, hit the like button, share, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you guys know when I go live and when I upload all that good stuff. And yeah, so you can see the set in front of us here. We've got the Moff Gideon minifigure up the top here, just out of frame. We have Paz Vizsla here. Then we have the two. Uh, Patronian guards, I think that's how you pronounce that. So yeah, well as always we'll set this off to the side briefly and take a look at the box. Now if we bring the box in, you can see we have the minifigures all the bottom here. We have Grogu and Mando on the other side for the like sort of art for this set. We have the two guards trying to attack Paz. Then we also have Moff Gideon flying on the side there. On the top of the box, you can see it's Moff Gideon's face, or minifigure for the one-to-one -one scale. And then on the back of the box, you can see, if I tilt this up a wee bit, you can see all of the details about like the Lego Star Wars set number and everything. And then there's a play feature with the door and the stud shooters and whatnot, which I will show in a moment or four. So, yeah, and there's just a, another look at the front of the packaging. So... Yeah, very, very cool. Set that off to the side. So, if we take oops, take off all the minifigures, here, well, here we have them off, get in. We'll set them off to the side. We'll take the guards off, and we'll take Paz off, just to actually take a look at the set itself, like the actual play features and stuff of the set, which, overall, it's not too much going on, but at the same time, it's not anything, you know, it's more than nothing as well. And um, you can see it's very nicely designed, sort of with this bit. You now, see these light pieces or uh, stickers. Got a little printed tile here. Got the little like box and whatnot, which looks fine. You can see, just could bring it up close. You can see the door, obviously. Bit of studs up here for the figures to stand. Then, if I pop this piece off, this is the little turret that sits on top, which on the box, Moff Gideon kind of controls because it's got the stud shooters in it. And it's got like a little seat there for someone to sit on it, which this does rotate 360 degrees. Um, inside of that, in this wee component compartment here, you get the ability to put Moff Gideon's hairpiece in it. Um, his helmet doesn't actually fit in it, which is kind of annoying, but, you know, if you don't want his helmet out and about, you're just going to have to shove it in the back, which if we turn this thing around, providing the lamp doesn't, the light doesn't want to fall off too many times. We'll turn it around to the back. And you can see how it looks. It's not as interesting from the back, unfortunately. It's just the back of the door with this mechanism here, which we'll show a bit more detail soon. And then under here, there's a panel with printing on it and a little light. You can see there's not much really going on there, which I've disconnected the box because the box only sits in like the one jumper tile there. Which, if we open the box, you can see it has some of the thermal detonators on it, which are pretty cool. But, you know, it's just kind of standard for this sort of stuff. So, yeah, just kind of have it sitting on the title like so. But, yeah, so for the play feature in this, bar the stud shooters, because I don't really use the stud shooters in the sets. I don't actually usually put the studs in them. We have the door here, which you can't see with the way it is but if I lift it up a tiny bit you can see this little ball what you do is you grab that and you pull the door up and then it locks into place which you can see how that looks the door itself sits a bit slanted I'll show you why because on the back this is the side that holds it up here just with this mechanism but on this side it's like drips down a little bit because there's nothing actually holding it what you really want you can like lift this up and just like fold well you're near enough pull the whole door off but obviously not a good idea if you don't want to dismantle your set kind of thing but you see just on the floor with the tiling and stuff or anything that focuses on it there's one single jumper there there's a few bits and pieces here and there you know so if you really want with the door open bar the fact that it looks ugly sticking out the top you can have paz and like oops, standing in the doorway you know, trying to defend himself and everybody from the guards as they're, you know, kind of getting too close to him for their own good and everything. 
you know, as Moff Gideon kind of just stands a bit further back here, but like, yes, do my work, you stupid bitches, or whatever. Um, obviously, if you want, you can have him standing on top of the crate for some reason, kind of watching everything ensue. But yeah, if you want to keep the door closed the way I had it originally, um, the best way is obviously just to hit the wee lever at the back, let it drop down, and then the way I usually have them positioned is have paws here, and then have one of the guards kind of over this side somewhere, we would say here, the way he was sitting, and then this other one, have him kind of standing very, very close to this box, just in this single, this single stud here, just so he can like, you know, try and stand on it without falling over, kind of like that there. And then Moff Gideon usually just sits up here somewhere with a detonator in his hand. So, yeah. What I'll do now, though, is I'll take these guys off the stand, grab Moff Gideon's hairpiece out of the little top piece, and I'll take a look at the minifigures, which, let's go do that. So, the first minifigures we have are the guards, which I'm just calling them the guards, because trying to pronounce that the name of them is a bit iffy at times. But you can see, these two are just identical with their separate weapons. Which, overall, they don't look half bad. You can see, obviously, they're kinda, they are kind of kind of got, like, the Stormtrooper armor going on here. But with, like, the, you know, the special helmets. Which, they kind of look alright, whatever. And you see the detail, I'll just use this one. Take the weapon out of his hand. You can see the detail overall, though. It's mainly red with like little bits of black to kind of break it up. And then in the back, kind of got like a bit of stormtrooper detailing and whatnot. They just have plain red heads just to kind of blend in. So it doesn't have like a skin tone showing or anything. Kind of hide their identity. Not that they probably have a specific identity anyway. Um, the other one is the exact same. Make no difference in the design or anything like that. So yeah, nothing terribly special with these guys. They do look cool though. Um, next we have Paz Vizsla, the main Mando himself, which overall the minifigure actually looks great. I do really like it. He comes with this big gun thing, or like his flamethrower, whatever it is. Though, even though it has like the little clip in the end here, you can't actually hold it with two hands, which is kind of annoying. But anyway, it is what it is. Um, but overall for the minifigure, it looks really, really nice. You can see detail on them got the nice like silver sort of beaten up helmet design with the blue and like the sand blue for the actual helmet itself you know see a bit of silver around the sides and then for the torso detailing you've got like the little bits and pieces on the chest armor on the back he's got like his flame knot pack for his flamethrower which just is on these two studs which you can just clip it on again like that he does not have a face it's just a Stormtrooper classic, like, black face for him. Black Lego head, like, just faceless, whatever. Which, if we pop this off and take a look at his torso, you can see just kind of the same design, only on his torso, with, like, the nice silver to kind of count as the battle damage. You can see the leg and hip printing there as well. is very, very nicely done. And then on the back, you can see the rest of the armor, kind of with whatever bits of scuffing and whatnot, which just looks great. So, whoops, yeah. If we can piece them back together here, quickly. Put his helmet back on, put his backpack back on. Just think of the yellow side up, or no, I'll put grey side up, I can't remember if it has a specific way of having it, but anyway, you can tell me in the comments if I put it on wrong. But, yeah, we'll put his gun back in his hand here too. If it allows me to, there we go. And yeah, there we have Paz Vizsla in all of his glory as well. Which, last but not least, we have our boy Moff Gideon. Which, this guy looks very, very cool. His helmet has a really nice design on it. You know, with like the spikes on the helmet, kind of like the other Mandu guy from Clone Wars, I think it is. Um, got like the New Year style helmet, kind of, but like the... The other troopers in whatever capacity with like the red visor and the red cheek pieces for his actual armor itself it doesn't look half bad obviously the body's black so um it has like all the sort of gray detailing instead of like the black line detailing which looks really nice the red belt got the red bits on his chest 
No arm printing, leg printing is just a lot of grey lines and whatnot, nothing too special. Backpack, we have these little detailing bits on this jetpack, which is one of the newer style jetpacks. The same way we had these guys from the last set that I took a look at, at least of Star Wars, which if we pop his helmet off, you can see his face, which if we're going to take a look at his face, we may as well pop his hairpiece on, which you can see how it looks there, very, very nice. He's kind of annoyed and angry in some form of that face, and then he's kind of a bit more natural, but still very menacing with that face. So, yeah. Pop the jetpack off for a second and pop his head back on. We'll just use the helmet for the rest of the video. You see the back torso print as well isn't, again, anything terribly special. But overall, it does look nice. So, yeah. That is kind of going to be it for this video, I think. If you like it, hit the like button, share, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you guys know when I go live and when I upload all that good stuff. We bring the set in again just to kind of put all the minifigures back on it in some form or fashion. While I try not to lose the hairpiece of um, Moff Gideon. Because obviously whenever it's not attached to him and whatnot, it's just a wild card. You never know where the fuck it's going to end up. So just like any loose Lego pieces I suppose. But yeah, that is another way you can actually show them. But actually one other thing before I finish this video. Um, with the actual build of the set, if we zoom out. There is something else you can do with it. If you have this pack that I took a look at before, which all so the minifigures kind of fell off it. But if you bought this battle pack with the Mandalorians and these troopers, you can actually combine the two of them. I can't believe I nearly forgot this. So you see in this set, there's a little clip or bar here and a little clip back here somewhere. Um, where is it? A little clip here. On the... Um, on this bigger set, there's a clip here, and there's a bar here, which if you really want to, you can go and clip them together. Which, if we use the bar, the clip over here and the bar on this side, just clip them together like that, and you see now they are connected as like a bigger diorama piece if you wish to have it like that. Which overall does not look half bad. Obviously these guys aren't on the display the same way that they should be. So just quickly put him there. I'll only put two of the Mandos or one of the Mandos and one of the other guys on for the sake of argument. But you can see now if you really want you can have like a big diorama piece like swinging around. Or if you want to do it from the other side, bring it around and clip it in like so. You can have this big diorama piece, which actually looks better for storage purposes. Unless you have like a shelf that weirdly sits at an angle like that. But I prefer it this way, that, you know, it's all one big line and everything. So, yeah. That is going to be it now for this video. If you like it, hit the like button, share, comment and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you guys know when I go live and when I upload all that good stuff. And yeah, well, let me know in the comments if you would consider picking this set up if you haven't already. And let me know also in the comments if there's any other videos you would like to see on the channel. Because I have a lot more LEGO reviews on the way. I, just as a sneak peek, I've got more Star Wars over there. And I have a few LEGO space stuff to take a look at. Like the new city space. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll see you guys soon with something else. Goodbye.